Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. It means it's time for another live stream. Today is Tuesday, September 7th, 2023. And if it's not September 7th, I'm just going to go with September 7th. I'm pretty sure that's what the date is. Uh, sorry, guys, for getting the um, live stream scheduled kind of late. I totally thought I had done it because I'd taken the photo, the thumbnail for today's live stream, like way earlier than I normally do in the day. Because I was already down here in the basement. I was doing stuff. I thought I was going to get ahead of things. And then in my mind, I had already made the live stream. And then I totally forgot until I came back down here. And it was live stream time. So sorry for a little bit of the uh, mix up for those of you who are tuning in live. Um, and I appreciate your patience with me as I still try and get this sorted out. What are we? Has it been like three years now that we've been doing this? Eventually, eventually, maybe we'll get it sorted out at some point. But before we get any deeper into this episode, let's uh, say hi to everyone listening into the audio only version of the podcast. Hopefully you guys are having a good run out there today. This morning, I got out on the trails because it had rained overnight. I thought it might be muddy out there. I wanted to test out those La Sportiva shoes that I got yesterday. And it was really fun and cool. Like temperatures were brisk. But it was still very humid. And so by the time I left, I was both covered in water from like all the plants being wet that I had to run through in the trails, <clears throat> but also sweating like crazy. So hopefully, as you're running, hopefully conditions are a little bit more comfortable than they were for me. And everyone watching this later on YouTube, not live, welcome to you guys as well. You are watching the number one running live stream to listen to to get the weather forecast from like 12 hours earlier or however much later it is than live that you're watching this. <laughs> Completely useless information. This, uh, this I mean, I think that is a, <laughs> I think that's a pretty good description for this uh, live stream. Number one podcast for completely useless, untimely information. There we go. Hopefully you're having a good day. All right, let's see what we got here in the chat. Uh, Sean Devlin says, hey, everyone. Perfect weather for a Peloton this morning. Body's feeling pretty good for a change. Well, that's good to hear, Sean. Uh, I was at the Y yesterday. Because I'm trying to get back into the normal scheme of things, even though I'm going to be traveling again in a couple of weeks. But um, I, I went to the to the YMCA yesterday. I did my run in the morning yesterday. I did a workout. And then in the evening, my daughter has right climbing team. And so that's a two-hour thing. So that gives me time to go to the gym, get in my leg day, and then also go to the grocery store. But at the gym, at the YMCA, now they have Peloton bikes, I guess. So there's like Peloton stickers all over the YMCA. And it's very confusing. I don't know. I've never done Peloton before. Uh, Raj Kumar Shinji says, Yo, Ko Run fam, excuse the break, had COVID and then more sickness, but I'm better now. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad you're feeling a lot better. Um, all right. <clears throat> Calvin Huang said, Hi, I had a first run in the Alpha Fly 2 uh, Elite Kachogi edition today. Not as exciting as version one, but still a great marathon option, I think. Okay. Mm, I'm trying to think. I don't think I've run in the Alpha Fly 2. I have a fake pair. I don't have a real pair. But I had the Alpha Fly 1 LA Kipchoge edition. That was a good shoe. <laughs> Small says, my man's co is back from Hogwarts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. This European trip was uh, quite a journey, Miguel. It's good to see you back. <clears throat> Frank says, the Rory Link Letter interview was good. Well, thanks, Frank. Yeah, I had a good time talking with Rory. It's good. You know, I've been doing this for a little while, and there's a handful of athletes who I've interviewed a couple times now, or I've seen them on course a handful of times, and so I feel like there's a rapport building, and so uh, that that's always nice. And it makes it a lot easier and much more enjoyable uh, of an interview. So I, I really had a good time with that talk, and I also had a fun time editing it too. Um, it always helps for me when the athlete is really into the shoes, because then it's just like then we could talk forever, you know, and it helps me. Um, make it more personalized it's something different than the athlete probably normally talks about but also something that this audience here is going to be pretty interested into and it's different than what they're going to get anywhere else so like that was that was really fun that was really fun um all right lane harrison says how many miles in your over blast three i think uh i stopped counting you know after i get to like 100 miles on the shoe i think i got like maybe 140 150 miles on it um, these days when I want to wear an ASIC shoe and it's a Nova Blast, you know, here's my Nova Blast three. I usually wear the Nova Blast trail. If I'm going to like an ASICs event, um, that's the one that I've been wearing or I've been wearing the magic speed three. So I kind of, you know, uh, because I review shoes, I don't get to like wear the shoes I enjoy the most. 
um, more often. So like for normal people, the, the shoe you enjoy the most is the one that has the most miles. For me, that doesn't apply. So I just don't have that many. Um, all right. Man Run says, hey, everyone, nice sustainable box you got there. He says, and he's official on week 21 of the challenge. So he's done 21 5Ks in a row. Nice. Good job. Uh, Raj Kumar says, Kobuzi, enjoy your videos on Europe while I was recovering. Question, how much luggage did you take on your travel? Thanks. Um, I took one giant bag. Craft, I, um, I unboxed it with you guys. That giant bag that Craft uh, sent. Um, that was big enough to carry all the clothes that I needed for both Budapest and Chamonix. And uh, I was able to get it like within a couple of grams from like the max allowable limit for luggage. So it was nice. It, it was it was a really, really great piece of luggage. You know, what's amazing is like that same like style of bag is very popular with athletic teams. So when I was in Budapest, a lot of teams like Team Germany had the exact same bag. Except theirs didn't say craft on the side. Theirs had like a German seal on the side. And like, I want to say Portugal also had like this. So I saw the bag all, all over the place in Budapest. Or maybe it wasn't the exact same bag, but very, very, very similar. Like same shot, size, shape, same weird side handles, roller bag. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, the Nation Rocks again says, is that plastic tape on an environmentally friendly box? I don't know what kind of tape it is. I can't, I don't know how I would tell. Mm, Daniel Burton wants to know, how old is Rory? That's a good question. I don't know. He's as old as Nico. I don't know if Nico's older or younger, but they overlapped at BYU. I want to say, I don't, I don't know how old Nico is. Is he 32? 28? I, I actually, I'm, not, I'm just absolutely guessing. Uh, Justin Convisor says, Kovazi, can you use your ASIC Connect and add them to release the Super Bowl in size 14, please? And thank you. I don't think that they do anything with FF Turbo in size 14. I don't know. I don't know if it's something to do with the Turbo or what, but like, I know like they'll do Magic Speed in uh, size 14, but they don't do Meta Speed. And I'm assuming that they won't do Super Blast. I don't know. Mm. Steve Ehrenberg says, have you heard anything about the possibility of upcoming Rebel V4? Saw one report of September release. I haven't heard anything. That's one that has been completely quiet. It would make sense to me if they released it in November to coincide with New York City Marathon. What would make even more sense to me is that they released it now so people training for New York could run in it. That would make the most sense. What would also make a lot of sense to me is if uh given how successful rebel 3 is i'm i don't know how i don't know how commercially successful it is but given how much i like the rebel version 3 um and given that new balance has done this before especially with like the 1080 um the 1080 remember when it went from what was it 1080 version 10 no 8 9 there was one 1080 i think it was the one with the really weird heel that did really well compared to all other 1080s. And they were just like, we're just gonna keep making this for a while. And it didn't get updated for like a year and a half, year and three quarters. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, but then that would put it in like a January release, maybe. So I, I don't know, I haven't heard anything about it, but that doesn't mean much because New Balance doesn't tell me much um, ahead of time. I kind of just get things from them. And then even then, sometimes it takes a while to get to me, even though they say they're getting me stuff. That being said, there's other stuff that's under embargo right now that I've had for like four months. I, so I don't know. And none of it's a Rebel version 4. Just to narrow things down. Mm. AJ wants to know, is the New Balance SC Trainer 2 more breathable than the Nova Blast? I would say no. Both of them are pretty breathable, though. I didn't have a problem with either one. Um, the Nova Blast is stretch, has this, Nova Blast 3 has that stretchy mesh, which I really like. Um, the no, the SE Trainer 2 is more of like a traditional upper material. Mm. Frank says, in terms of how, how do you prioritize shoes, he says, I always wear the shoe I hate the most so I can get rid of them sooner. That that also makes a lot of sense to me. Um, Frank, how do you eat your pizza? 
how I eat pizza is I eat, I turn it around and I eat the crust first because I like that part the least. Not that I don't like pizza crust. I just like it the least. So I usually eat the pizza crust first and then I kind of eat it backwards a little bit until I get into the solidly into the cheese. Then I'll turn it around because I want to get rid of that part first. That's That's how I do it. <laughs> um, all right matt anderson says that both the rebel and the sc elite will feature piba foam interesting i haven't heard anything about it uh dual shot lock says first time catching a stream love the channel Kofuzi. well welcome to the live stream hope you're having a good time here um and uh thanks for thanks for checking it out Luke Klein says, Rebel version 3 was a letdown from version 2. The 4 will be a scale back SC, I bet. Um, yeah, I think, I'm trying to remember. I talked to Danny Orr at TRE last year. And I'm trying to remember. I feel like, see, some people, the people that liked Rebel 2 either liked it as very much as like a, a modern Kinvara or liked it as a speed day shoe. Because that's what I thought the Rebel 2 was. Um, this one. This one right here. I felt like it was a session shoe. It didn't feel like a daily trainer to me. And I remember Danny saying that they really wanted the Rebel to be a daily trainer using fuel cell. Which I was like, why would you do that? You got the 880. But they want kind of like two different experiences. A fuel cell experience and a, and a fuel cell experience. And I can't remember what he said about four, if I was going to go back to what two was, which is similar to what one was, or if they're going to stay along with three. I really like three. And I think that my my hunch, I don't remember, I, I don't want to put any words in Danny Orr's mouth, but, but the sensation, the, the, the sentiment that I remember is that Danny Orr really wants that shoe to be a daily trainer. So I feel like, a four i mean this might be a year of like very minor updates because everything was pretty good last year last year was a really good year um so like i think i think that that the rub if, if there if, if we get a rubble four this year i i would be surprised if it's a very different shoe mm -hmm. all right Frank says when he's on <laughs> for the pizza crust, uh, he gives a crust to the dog. <laughs> Funny. Mm. Raymond Stadium says, dude, what do you hold if you eat the crust? I hold the pizza. It's not that hard. I mean, there's so many foods that you can eat that don't have crust. What do you what do you how do you hold a taco? How do you hold a burrito? Neither of those have crust. You just hold it. <laughs> It's not, that, it's not that hard. Just flip it around. Pizza Pizza Hut made this the stuffed crust pizza with the idea like you turn around and do you remember the marketing for that? You turn around and you eat the crust first. That was the whole premise of the thing. Sometimes I'll rip the crust off and just eat that, and then I'll flip it around and eat the bready part. So it's it's not you can, you know I don't know maybe maybe I'm secretly an advanced pizza eater and that's just easy to me. Is that hard? See here's here here's the thing. Uh, I mean, I, even if you're eating a, a traditional like New York slice, the kind that you fold, you could eat the crust first. Just rip the crust off, eat that part first, and then you could eat the back, eat it from the back to the front. I don't know. Mm. Go running with Oliver says Sage just put out a YouTube short. He's running with Serious Runner and Kafuzi. Very cool. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm still editing the UTMV video. And uh, I just edited the part where we went on that run. So it was really fun. Uh, it was really fun to go to see him. Dude, so I, I went running with Sage Kennedy and Serious Runner in in, uh, in Chamonix. Uh, me, Ashley, uh, Jade, and then uh, the two of them went for a run. And the wild thing about that is the day before, Sage had run 190 miles with 30,000 feet of elevation gain of TDS. I don't remember what the, it stands for. It's many words. It's like six words. It's like, I don't know. 
It's a really long name for a course. It's a relatively new race in the UTMB week of races, I think. And um, Sage said it's, it was more challenging tech terrain technically than UTMB was. He ended up finishing 12th, which was incredible. And um, I think you guys have all seen that. You guys know that. But like through the day we went running was like the day after, maybe a day and a half after he had finished. So it was incredible. I was like, you sure you want to go for a run? I can buy you a beer if you want. <laughs> you know, he's like, no, let's go for a run. I was like, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, and then we went for a run around the track and I'm running around the track. And, it, and then all of a sudden I hear like footsteps behind me <laughs> and Sage is like chasing me with a GoPro. <laughs> So uh, I was just seeing that because I also taped myself too. And I saw you know, like him in the footage. So it's pretty fun. Pretty fun. I'll have to go check that out. I haven't seen that yet. <clears throat> the run up says it's still a hundred degrees here in El Paso, Texas. Thoughts and prayers, man. That's <laughs> miserable. Uh, can you still make gains running on treadmills? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can. Um, and you know, yes. Is running on a treadmill different than running outside? Sure. Is it that different? No. I mean, I think, think about all the people, I know most of these stories are from pros, but think about the people that are on ellipticals, do aqua jogging, even just stay fit on the bike if they're like injured or for some reason, you know, and they need zero impact activities. How like fitness, you know, translates in a lot of ways for a lot of things. So. Mm. Andrew's got this. If you don't have a crust, how do you hold it? Those data? <laughs> it, yeah, it's exactly the same. But Ju Justin says this pizza eating tactic, eating it from, is this really that? <laughs> is, is eating the crust first and eating the pizza slice backwards really that wild? He says this is the, this pizza eating tactic may be the most insane thing I've ever heard. And now, I'm not saying that I do it every time, but a lot of times I'll do it. If I'm just being lazy or if I know there's ranch dressing around, I'll eat it from the front, you know, and then I'll dip the crust in ranch dressing. Um, or if I'm just being lazy, then I'll eat the crust last. But it, a lot of times if I'm thinking about it, like if I'm going to eat, if I'm going to sit down and eat like a whole pizza by myself, I'm going to strategize a little bit, you know, then, then I'll, then I'll, then I'll eat the crust first. Uh, Cuban B says I should roll the pizza slice like a croissant. Um, yeah, you know what I had on the way back home from uh, from Geneva, the United flight. It we are, we were only supposed to get one meal, at least that's what like the flight itinerary said, and we got breakfast, and that breakfast was actually really good. European, whenever I fly over internationally, the meals are actually really good. Like airplane food gets a really bad rap, um, but when you get when you fly internationally, the food's usually a lot better. Uh, the breakfast was good. And then later we got a snack <clears throat> and it was like this, they called it like a pizza roll up. And basically it was kind of like, uh, kind of like a, kind of looked like a hot, like a hot dog roll, like a hot dog roll up, but with pizza inside. And it was actually re really, really nice. <clears throat> Very tasty. Kind of like, uh, we have these like frozen cheese sticks that we get the girls or garlic, like cheesy garlic bread things. Um, so it was kind of like that, but it was pizza-y. It was nice. So it was kind of like the shape of a hot dog, but there's pizza inside. That was good. And I was like, I'm going to start making more of these at home. Just pizza roll-ups. I used to make pizza empanadas. All, I guess they're calzones. I used to make calzones all the time. But then they always explode and stuff. So sometimes it's hard. But, you know. Frank says, what's the best way to eat pizza during an ultra? Apparently roll it up. Like a pizza burrito. This is what Dean Carnassus does. <clears throat> Jerry is row. I says, <clears throat> this is the only running live stream that talks about how to eat pizza. I, I, I have a feeling there's a lot of running, <laughs> running podcasts that talk about how to eat pizza. <laughs> That's what I think. <clears throat> Uh, Shannon says, ha ha ha. Hey, Kofam. Kofuzi is the pizza eating savant. <laughs> he was trained by Struff Cust Pizza Hut. I mean, I grew up, I mean, we, who didn't grow up eating pizza? But I grew up eating a lot of pizza. All kinds. 
ma- mainly a lot of like Pizza Hut and Domino's because that was like huge in the day, you know. But like, um, I did eat, I, I, I've eaten a lot of pizza. I love pizza. Mm. Lee Chad says hi. I think that's what he's saying. Um, Matt Anderson says, says, honest opinion. If you get pizza from the right places, like a quality place, the crust is the star of the show. I don't know that I would say star, but some pizza crusts are better than others. You know? Fiona says, crust first is crazy. <laughs> And Calvin says, eating pizza backwards really breaks the Geneva Convention. That's the real reason I had to spend so much time in Geneva. Stand trial for my crimes. <laughs> and Eliza says, gah, ranch dressing in pizza. <laughs> ah, funny. Uh, Kurt says, uh, just a for Chicago Marathon. My kid is going over surgery that week, so I figure I need to hang out with him. Going to Universal Studios instead. Well, Kurt, you will be missed. Um, but definitely sounds like the right call. Hopefully your son does well or your kid does well. Uh, right. All right. Frank Hillier says box, box, box. All right, let's go for it. This box from Saucony. A lot of you guys have already uh, seen it. Saucony has been advertising very hard already um, on its socials as to what this is, doing an unboxing themselves. So, and some of you have already kind of like guessed in the chat what it is, but let's see what they put in mind. <clears throat> I think these are like the water soluble kind of packing peanuts. So it's full of that. And there's no shoe box. There's packing slip. It's just this box, packing peanuts, and the shoe. Triumph 21, run for good. So I was really excited about this when I saw it at TRE last year um, because they were gonna do a Triumph 21. I thought it was gonna be a pretty minor update. That was my understanding. Um, so I kind of passed on reviewing that one. And instead I asked, can I review the run for good? Um, I talked with, I want to say Jesse over at Saucony about it at TRE. And they were like, um, it is a corn based, uh, midsole foam, um, which their other one is castor bean based. So that is also like a little, even their regular, um, Power Run Plus is a little bit more eco-friendly, um, but this is even further eco-friendly. It's a corn-based product, and I feel like this is a natural gum rubber. I'll have to double check on that, but I think that's what this is. Um, and I feel like the the color of this, which is showing up really kind of white, it's a darker gray in real life. Let's let the camera white balance normalize a little bit um, so you can kind of see what the color is. Uh, uses a, a process that doesn't use as much water in terms of the dyeing. Jesse says that um, this foam is good. It's not as good as the regular Power Run Plus is what I've been told. Um, but they're hoping, they keep working on this, they keep releasing it, hopefully more people will buy it and, in, and send positive signals to the brand that this is what people want so they can continue developing it and that hopefully the eco way just becomes the way, um, making for a more sustainable brand. So really excited to try this one out. I really could have used this one today for a nice easy run. Um, see, check this out. They even sent this, some information. The internal packaging is completely dissolvable in water. So those packing peanuts uh, do dissolve. Um, oh, look, it says, fill this box with sneakers you wish to donate. Use the enclosed give back box label and drop the box at any local UPS to send your shoes to a partner charity. I got a bunch of shoes that I could throw in there. And this note is printed on seeded paper. Simply tear it up into large pieces, add it to some soil with a bit of water, and it will sprout flowers. So I'm, I'm going to actually do that because now we've got like pots at our house and the kids have been enjoying planting flowers and stuff. And we got tomatoes growing in the back. We got a flower box or planter box. So we'll do that. Um, and the Triumph RFG uses renewable materials, cotton upper features, plant-based dyes for sure you can feel good about wearing. 
powered by corn. It's power on bio plus 55% corn based foam and natural rubber, 80% natural rubber outsole engineering to offer the same level as performance as a synthetic sole it replaces. So, all right. I feel like I had the facts down pretty good on this one. And then here's the other one. Feels big. Feels really tall. Doesn't that look really tall? Oh, and we got a reusable water bottle in here. It says, take courage. Like this, clean canteen limited edition. We have a lot of clean canteens in our house, so this will be nice. I have a feeling I will not get to use this very much, and my daughter will be taking this one. She has a cross-country meet today, by the way. Pretty excited about it. Her other cross-country meet this week got canceled because of the heat, which I feel like is a, a very um, apropos subject to talk about. We're talking about eco-friendliness here. Uh, it was canceled due to the heat, and I'm not mad about it because that location was one of the farthest away cross country meet locations. It takes a long time to get there. So I'm glad I didn't have to go that far out. All right. That's what's in the box. Cool. Thank you to Saucony for sending that. Very excited to test these out tomorrow. I'm not usually a gray shoes guy, but these look nice. I like these. Cool. Is it breathable? Pretty breathable. Right around here at the top of the vamp, not breathable, but right in the toes. Nice. Very breathable. Good. Cool. Um, what, kind, what kind of flowers do you guys think are going to be in here? Um, go running with Iris. Be sure to wear, <laughs> wear that Boston jacket to the cross country meet today. <laughs> you know what's funny is that Stephen wore his. Um, uh, so I was when when I was in Chamonix with Stephen and Sage, we had gotten together, and uh, as we're about to start running, we had met, met at the craft um, base camp area, the bar that they had rented out, and then uh, we were walking over towards the river to run along the river path, and as we were like crossing a street, I saw a dude in a Boston Marathon jacket. And I was like, Stephen, Stephen, look, someone's wore their Boston Marathon jacket to Chamonix. I'm like, is it a flex here? I'm not sure. And then I'm looking at him and he's wearing his yellow long sleeve Boston Marathon shirt. <laughs> at the same time, and I was like, are you wearing that to be in character or did you really want to? I, never, I was like, never mind, never mind. You, you do you, you look great in the shirt. <laughs> you look great in the shirt. Justin <laughs> uh, Conrader says, you know, this thing here with this the seeds, it's not, it's, it's not flowers. They've cracked the code on how to grow running shoes on trees. And you'll be growing baby Triumph 21s. <laughs> there we go. That's funny. <clears throat> um, Daniel Burton says, how far does your daughter run? I think they do two miles for sixth graders. Mm, Calvin Wong says, when is a water bottle? Not re I said a reusable water bottle. But yeah, it's a water bottle. It's a nice one metal uh i don't think it's vacuum insulated i have some vacuum insulated ones um it's not reusable when it's like a single use water bottle you know what i mean yeah this is a single wall but we have a lot we have a lot of those in our house but yeah it'll be good daniel burton says this when you plant it it sprouts socks hmm um yeah Calvin Wong says, brands being honest about their shoe not being as good. If only Adidas could say so about Primex Strong too. I'm still waiting on mine. I really thought it would have been here by now. So um, here, here's, an, here's another thing I got to tell you about. So I had I'd seen that like Thomas had had made, not only had his Primex Strong too, but had made like posts about it. Like he had photographed. I think it was still under embargo. So he was like, uh, so he was like posting like blurry photos or something like that. I think that's what was happening. So I emailed my contact over at Adidas 
and I was just like, hey, I would love to be able to be put on the list for um, Prime X Strong 2. And they're like, oh, yeah, 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 you're on our list. We already have, we already have, we already had you on our list. It's going out. So I was like, oh, cool, cool, cool. And I really thought that by the time I got back, after two weeks um, being in Budapest and then Chamonix, that a pair would be waiting for me when I got home. And it was not. So that's a little bit disappointing. Um, and then I'm going to be going back to Europe later this month in about three weeks i guess two and a half weeks at this point um i'm going to be going with adidas eyewear to run in the dolomites so i have terrible vision you guys have seen me do stuff with roca um i definitely love running in prescription lenses if it's possible and they got some new stuff that they want me to try and it's going to be a hut to hut trip in italy so i'm like super excited about it and in Chamonix, I saw there was, they launched or soft launched or did a marketing event about uh, the Agravic Speed Ultra, their new super shoe that they've been in development for like two years, right? Um, looks really cool. Uh, P-Bex foam, it's got a plate, looks really fun. Uh, a lot, all the Terex runners were racing in it over the weekend. Uh, they did a giveaway. They gave away a hundred pairs. The line for it was like super long. It was a great marketing event. And I was going to email my contact about it. And I was like, ah, I don't even have the Prime X2. There's no way they're going to be able to send me a graphic uh, Speed Ultra before I get to Italy again. So like the other day, I ordered like a pair of like the Agravic Ultra Trail. I did the. I already reviewed like the the one that were like the two ninety nine one, the two ninety. Because they have the weights listed on it. So I ordered the other one. It's Boost and Light Strike. And I'm just like, what else is there to run in Interex? Um, so I think they're supposed to send me some stuff. But, you know, it's just like... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think maybe I'm like falling down on people's lists. People don't want to send me the shoes fast anymore. That's cool. It's all right. Um, yeah. Mm, go running with Oliver says believe in the run killed everyone's dream on the Prime X too. I don't know. I've I've kind of messaged Thomas about it. You know, he and we had some conversation. I guess we could talk about it now because his review is out, right? I haven't read his review, but he was like he wasn't super excited about it. He said it was different than what we um, tested out in when, in TRE in December. And I was listening to the interview that they had with the Adizero guy, Robbie something. Um, they just had an interview with. Um, and so like what they're describing is very different than what I remember seeing and wearing and putting on foot um, in Texas last December. And so I'm like, okay, well maybe Thomas is right. But I also would like to point out that Thomas did not like Primex the first couple of times he ran in it. And so I'm like, is that what's going on again here? Did you run on cobblestone again? in the Primex too. He's like, no, 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 I didn't. I ran on regular roads. So I was like, oh, okay. So, I mean, I will reserve judgment until I can test it myself. Um, so we'll see. It might be one of those shoes that we disagree on. doesn't happen a lot, Thomas and me, but this could be one. Justin Kahnweiser says, you're the first human being to ever pronounce my last name correctly on the first try, by the way. So congrats. Well, thank you. I had a, a law school professor who has was convisor but with a v not a w and i just i kind of went with it so i thought it i thought it was i'm glad i guessed correctly mm, lalo p says i signed up for the way too cool 50k that sounds fun so i was just talking with someone this weekend about way too cool 50k was their first 50k i can't remember who now hmm hmm Shannon says, I have very strong feelings on the Prime X version one, but I'm trying to keep an open mind on strong version two. Thomas didn't like the V1. I, I agree. I, I remember Thomas didn't like the V1. Um, I'm trying to keep an open mind on strong version two, keeping in mind that I don't love strong. Strong looks great. It's cool. But for racing, like I like the Takumi Sen 9 upper. Where is that? Like this upper works great for me. I have no problems with it. The Primex, where is it? Uh, 
the Primex version one upper, also think it's great. I don't, I feel like the strong makes it heavier. Maybe I'm wrong. So here's the strong that I ran Boston in, Primex version one strong. I feel like this is a heavier shoe. Um, it certainly feels like a less breathable shoe. So I think the benefit of strong is that it gives a lot of structure to the very tall Primex shoe, um, which could definitely help move all that foam and get it to bend properly and compress properly. Um, but I wouldn't mind trying a Primex 2 in a non-strong version as well, you know? Uh, but we'll see. I don't I don't know when mine's coming. Hopefully it'll be here before I go to Italy, but we'll we'll have to see. Um I'm also trying to keep an open mind. My default is for all shoes, not just the Primex. My default is always this shoe's gonna be good. I'm excited. It's gonna be good. I'm gonna like it. Keep an open mind, you know? So if there is a bias one way, it's that it's gonna be good. Pretty much on everything. So same thing, like even with this, the Triumph 21 run for good version with the Power Run Bio Plus, like Saucony themselves says it's not quite as excellent as the regular Power Run Plus. Otherwise, this would just be the for new formula for Power Run Plus, but they're hoping to that they can continue making it better, get customer feedback, that kind of thing. So always am optimistic. Sometimes I'm disappointed later, but... And CV76 says, Edbud was also look, lukewarm on the Prime Strong too. So, yeah. Uh, Edbud and I also disagree on a lot of shoes, too. So, um, I'm just going to keep rejecting all uh, <laughs> opinions that um, make me less excited about the shoe. <laughs> and then we'll revisit later once I actually run in it. Kevin says the Primex Strong version was still my favorite of all time. It was always going to be hard for V2 to top it. Yeah, but they've changed a lot. They've changed so much for V2. And I think it's exciting. But yeah. Max Romanowski wants to say, how's your day going, Kofuzi? It's going well. Um, I'm a little tired because I had my first leg day in a while. Or what feels like. I think it was my first leg day in a while. Yesterday. And... Um, I'm feeling uh, a little bit overwhelmed because this UTM video, video, UTMB video is so big and I'd like to get it out by tomorrow, but most likely I'm not going to. So that always kind of like, when I miss my own arbitrarily set publication deadlines, it always kind of bothers me. So, but other than that, I'm doing well. I'm happy to be here with you guys. It's a very nice distraction from all the other things that stress me out on the day, you know? <laughs> go running with him. says, if Adidas, if an Adidas rep is listening, you better slip, go some cash before his review. Otherwise, profits won't tank. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if only it worked that way. All right. Run up says, Ed Bud uh, gave and Aubrey is running. Ed Bud and Aubrey's running gave Primex two pretty good reviews. So someone said that Ed Bud didn't like it. And some people says that they he did. So I don't know. Like I said, I don't watch other people's reviews until I run in it myself. Um, Aubrey Rooney's giving it good reviews. Maybe it's for taller or heavier runners to compress all that foam in two plates. Yeah, but you know, if they're testing it on pros, which is what the Adazero guy said in the interview, they test it on pros first. It has to work for pros first. And then, you know, they see if it works for regular humans, you know? Um, so like, I don't, I don't know that that's necessarily the case for the out of zero shoe of the Primex. I'm very intrigued because they said in the interview that there's three layers of light strike pro it's like light strike carbon and then light strike and then carbon composite, then light strike and then outsole. Right. So, um, I'm really interested to see that how they tweaked each individual. They said that each individual layer is a different kind of like formula of Light Strike Pro. The top layer is the most responsive, which to me means firmest. And then maybe the bottom one is the squishiest. I don't know. Only only one way to find out. <laughs> only one way to find out. <laughs> Calvin says, the strong is lighter and some more supportive. 
um, LMAO, we've been over this, co. <laughs> yeah, I is strong lighter. I don't. I don't think strong is lighter. I'm not sure. I guess I can weigh my shoes, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, Mike Ziegler says, "What's your recommendation for a four-hour mar marathoner if money was not an object?" Uh, I would think that there's a couple of really good options. One I would look at first would probably be the Endorphin Pro Three. Uh, I would also probably look at Alpha Fly. I would probably also look at um, like either SC Trainer Two. Um, that that could be a really good one. Um, for that duration of time being on foot, um, that would be a good one. And super blessed. I think those would be the ones that I'd look at. CV76 says, can you imagine having a suit made of strung? It would be so rigid. You would walk, you would walk around. It'd be like, you know, when they have like, uh, like in, in like television when someone like gets hurt in a skiing accident and then like the full body cast and they're always knocking things over. That's what would happen if you had a, a suit made out of Adidas strong material. Leona says, wait, I missed something. Are you going to Italy? Yes. Uh, at the end of the month, I'm going to be spending, I think, four days in the Dolomites with Adidas Eyewear, which is a different company kind of than Adidas. Um, yeah. And so that'll be really fun. I think the terrain, I haven't done a lot of research, which is typical for me, but I think the terrain is going to be pretty similar to what's in Chamonix, um, at least in terms of the fact that like, I don't think that we're sleeping at like 11,000 feet. We might be running up high, but I think that every night we'll be coming down low. I think, I think, I hope. I don't like sleeping at altitude. It really messes me up. Chamonix was great because Chamonix was like, you sleep at 3,400 feet. You can get up into the hills and get up to eight, 9,000 feet relatively easily because there's cable cars. Um, or you can climb, you know, if you wanted to run uphill, um, which me and Alex Felitti did one day. We did 2,000 feet of gain in like an hour. That was a lot. Oh, that was hard. Um, he had to wait for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you, when you're done, you just run back down into the valley and then you're sleep at 3,500 feet. It's nice. Dominic Smirnowski says, will there be a meet and greet or a trail run in the Dolomites? I'll be around. Unfortunately, no, because I'm not in charge of like the schedule and stuff like that. Um, so I don't know what we're doing and like where we're going and stuff like that. So... I think their main thing is they want to get like, I don't know who else is going on this trip, but they want to get like photographs and stuff of people using it in the Dolomites. So like, they're, I don't know if it's a photo shoot or what. I don't know. I'm not really sure. They asked me if I want to go. I'm like, okay. But yeah. Um... Kevin Huang says, love the Herm Runs feature on Believe in the Run. Bigger runners today. Shows that all that at all sizes, everyone has their preference of shoe, and it's not a homogenous recommendation. Yeah, it's good to see that Herm Runs is getting out there, doing work, collabing with some people. That's nice. I'm that's that's exciting. Uh, Brandon, hey, what's going on, Brandon? He says, I'm pumped for the Strong 2.0, but holy moly, 400 Canadian is tough to justify. 400 Canadian? That's a lot. You know what I'm su more su surprised? I know it happens a lot already, but you know what I'm really surprised doesn't happen even more? I'm really surprised that like when people come to the U.S. for races, that they're not leaving with like a bunch of shoes. You know what I mean? Um, now, like at the Chicago Marathon Expo, there's definitely a lot of people doing some shoe shopping. And I'm like, these people aren't all buying shoes for tomorrow. And it's usually people that um, are speaking a foreign language. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's what's going on. They might not be this might this shoe might not even be available ever in their home country. Let alone it's probably not available now. You know what I mean? So like, but like, what's the exchange rate for the U.S. and Canada? Like, if you were to, I mean, you can just cross the border, can't you, Brandon? You're not that far from the border, I think. Um, what is the Primex? But then it's like, what store carries Primex Strong too? You'd have to go to like an Adidas store that has that. That could be 
that could be annoying. But yeah, 400 Canadian. It just sounds like an ungodly number. Uh, Smalls wants to know, when is the next Influencers on the Run Relay podcast drop? The last episode was great. So I was just talking with Tommy Runs this morning. Um, I think the name of it is going to be Behind the Running Influencer is what we're going to call it. I have to check with Tommy and see if he likes that one. He doesn't like the word influencer, but I feel like we got to get comfortable. Uh, the last one was with Laura Green. I think that one was really, it went over really well, I think. Um, Matt Chatham told me that it did well because we have like our, like a twice, a, once every two weeks call. And he, we went over like numbers and stuff the other day. And he was like, it did really well. I'm like, Okay. Like he's telling me the number of downloads and I'm like, is that a lot? I don't know. I'm used to like, like TikTok numbers are one thing. Instagram numbers are another and YouTube numbers are one. And then I don't know about podcast numbers. I have no idea. Um, and he's like, yeah, this is really good. I was like, oh, okay. We'll keep doing it then. And so Tommy and I were talking about it. I think the next, I'm going to see if Hella wants to get on there. So we'll see. I'm going to text him today. I know I saw, I saw him in, in Chamonix and he's cause I'd already asked him to be come on the live stream, but I think it might be better to have him come on that one. If he wants to, not everyone wants to talk about like behind the scenes and stuff. So, you know, all right, let me scroll down and catch up to you guys a little bit. Uh, manual 10 says running shoe prices are even higher in Sydney, Australia. I've heard about that. The, I think the craziest thing that I've ever heard about in terms of pricing differences, like in Australia is like, um, uh, back when you could just, when you would, you could just buy Photoshop. What was it? I think it was Photoshop. Photoshop used to be so expensive that I remember people would talk about like, you could buy a plane ticket from Sydney to New York buy Photoshop stay the night, fly home, and it would be cheaper than buying Photoshop in Sydney for some reason. I don't know. That didn't, didn't, make, any, didn't make any sense to me. I don't know if it was Photoshop or Premiere Pro. I want to say it was Photoshop, but yeah. And Kevin Hong says, behind the running influencer? Yeah, so <laughs> behind the running influencer. I see what you're saying. I thought you were asking what it is. Okay, yeah. Dominic Smirnowski says the endorphin elites are $400 plus in Australia. That's a lot. I mean, 280 here in the U S is a lot as well. Um, but $400 plus, I don't know what the exchange rate is, but it's a lot. Oh, that's a lot. Uh, and Joe Carter says, I just got here. What was in the box? What was in the box was the triumph 21 run for good edition, uh, which is made out of, um, Power Run Bio Plus, which is a 55% corn-based foam to help limit the dependence on plastic and 80% natural rubber outsole. The, the gum rubber, I mean, Saucony has always done really good things with outsoles. Do you remember crystal rubber back when the Zantes were running shoes? I know they still make Zantes, but do you remember when the Zantes, the Zante Pursuit, they had like six different kinds of Zantes. It was super confusing in Saucony lineup. I'm um, um, glad they got rid of that. Wait, wait a minute. Am I confusing New Balance and Saucony right now? Who made the Zantes? I think that was New Balance. Never mind. I just got them confused. I'm just nostalgic for a really good outsoles, I guess, at this point. Um, yeah. I just miss Crystal Rubber. Do you remember that? It was blue. It was nice. Mm. Yeah, Calvin says, yeah, Saucony is not, yeah, it's New Balance. I just got confused for a second there. Sorry. Mm. All right. Chris says, yo, just listening while I make food, I got my Primex strung from the Adidas outlet in August for 150 US dollars. What? That doesn't even make sense. That must have been some sort of accident. That's nice. Take that, take that shoe and run. <laughs> Good for you. That's amazing. Um, that's super cool. That's super cool. Mm. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, yeah. Calvin says, okay, I was going to say definitely New Balance. You you guys are right. You guys are right. But I just, I, I, I like gum outsole. I like crystal rubber. 
I just think maybe they don't hold up as well, but they just look really nice, you know? Mm. And Calvin's wrong that the Adidas Primex Strong, I'm guessing version one, was showing up at Burlington and Marshalls for less than 50 bucks. I just feel like if you were like a regular person shopping there and you saw that, you'd be like, people are paying $50 for this? That's, I think, what would happen. That's what I really think would happen. Yeah. So like that probably is not even selling. If they sold it for a hundred bucks, people are like, oh, this must be good. And they probably look it up, you know? I'm not a pricing guy though. So maybe I'm completely wrong. CV76 says, crystal rubber sounds like a drug. Well, it kind of sounds like crystal meth, I guess. But like the crystal rubber was really not, it, it, it wasn't that grippy. <laughs> I don't know why I like it. I, I like it because it was pretty. But it, like it wasn't that grippy. It was a little bit dense. It was kind of hard to to stand on. Um, and in fact, it was a little bit slippery. But it was a beautiful color. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm. All right. Um, I think that's going to be a good place to leave it for today, guys. I got to go work on this UTMB video because I would really like for you guys to see it. There's so much, there's so much running footage. I was just going through it today and I was like, did I go for three runs on the same day? And in fact, I did. I went for three different runs in a single day. Um, all I did was run while I was over there. And that, you know, I did other things too, but it was really fun. It was really fun. So I wanted you guys to see it. So I'm going to go get on that, go work on it. I got some reels I got to make too. I ran into the Solomon S Lab. I ran into the Nord, uh, the, not Lord, the um, La Sportiva. So I got some stuff I got it. I got to do. But um, hopefully there'll be a video tomorrow, but very likely no. But I will have another live stream. So I'll see you tomorrow. Same time as today, 1 p.m. Central Time. We'll unbox something. I got a couple of things here I'll pick from. So I'll unbox something else and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Same time as today, 1 p.m. Central Time. Hopefully see you then. In the meantime, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.